Hello, I'm Toy Cat, and the world is a huge place, which is really great in lots of ways, but it means that lots of information is quite hard to transmit, and when it comes to geography, this is more true than almost anywhere else. There are all sorts of misconceptions or straight up lies that are widely spread, and today I wanted to do my best to correct some of the biggest ones, because you might know, for example, the capital of Turkey is Istanbul, but this is in fact not true. The capital, although Istanbul is one of the biggest cities on the planet, it's been the capital of lots of historic empires, and it feels like a capital city in lots of ways as a result. The truth is, the actual capital of Turkey, uh, the modern day state at least, is found more inland towards the geographic center, and that is Ankara. Ankara is also a pretty big city, it's just not Istanbul levels. Funnily enough, this exact same logic applies to Canada. The most popular city is Toronto, a lot of people know this is the capital, but the actual capital is found in Ottawa. You can prove this on Google Maps because the capital has a little black dot to refer to it rather than a white one. Um, and funnily enough, Ottawa was chosen as the capital of Canada because they wanted a further inland city, further away from the US border, than their current city, you know, their biggest cities of the time, Toronto and Montreal. It's hilarious to see Canada in its modern size and looking at Ottawa and then thinking, wow, yeah, we're so far away from the US right now. Uh, but it is, even now, one of the biggest cities in terms of far away from the US border. It's still one of the furthest away cities that are major from the US border. It's a, it's a funny fact, but funny facts are something that a lot of people uh, might enjoy. And one of the ones that I think a lot of people know is that as you go higher in elevation, uh, it gets hotter because you're getting closer to the sun. This is not true. In fact, there's a lot of, you know, counterpoints to this. It seems very easy to disprove. Although there are a lot of places that are high up and close to the sun and also very hot, especially desert-wise speaking, um, if you were to take, let's say, the lowest elevation place on the planet, or in North America at the very least, at minus 86 meters in Death Valley, you might assume they'd be so, you know, cold because they're so far away from the sun, but actually Death Valley is where the highest temperatures on the planet have been recorded. Uh, it's only 21 degrees right there. Uh, but if you if you look on this, you'll see the record temperature is 134 degrees Fahrenheit, or in real degrees, that's 57 uh, uh, degrees Celsius, which is absolutely wild if you think about it, right? So yeah, in fake degrees, 134, 57 in like, you know, normal measurements. That is three times the, man, I, I really cannot imagine 57 degrees. I think you would just die. Uh, speaking of just dying, another counterpoint to this evidence, you know, there's a really low place that's really hot. I think a lot of people should know uh, that obviously mountains get quite cold. And so even uh, another thing people think is hot is the equator. But if we go to Ecuador, a country literally named after being on the equator, where north meets south, it's uh, it's one it's, it's one of the hottest places on the planet, is where you might assume. And although that can be generally true, if we go to this little mountain right over here, Chimborazo, maybe you've never heard of it. It's definitely a minor mountain. Let's not think about that too much. Um, but if you look at Chimborazo, you'll see that its, uh, you know, its peak is actually covered in snow. Wow, it's on the equator, basically, but yet the peak is snow covered because it's the opposite of true fun fact but yeah uh, speaking of uh, you know Chimborazo I said it was minor but the most uh, you know what's the tallest mountain on earth you might know that as Everest right pretty pretty reasonably so too but the actual tallest mountain on earth depends on how you measure it the tallest one in terms of the mountain itself is Mount Kea it is 10,210 meters or 33,500 feet um, and so that is obviously measuring from below sea level but if you want to if you don't want to know like the tallest mountain because that means nothing you want to know about the tallest mountain in terms of distance from the Earth's center, or, you know, closest to space, I guess you could say, then the actual tallest mountain would be Chimborazo. The closest to the sun, I guess, is a good measurement. Uh, because the Earth bulges so much at the equator, and you might recall that Chimborazo is a mountain found in a country literally named for being on the equator, uh, the map kind of looks like this. The centrifugal bulge, because whatever. The Earth is a sphere. It has, it's not quite a sphere. It has a weird bulge uh, in the center, and it kind of goes inwards towards the outwards. Uh, but as you can see, that means that Mount Chimborazo is 2,072 meters uh, further from the Earth's center than Mount Everest, and therefore is the tallest mountain if you care about relative distance to space. If you don't care about relative distance to space, maybe you care about Brazil, because honestly, I feel like so many countries have this misconception about their capital, and Brazil is one of them. Sao Paulo is a huge city, Rio de Janeiro are huge cities in Brazil, but the actual capital is called Brasilia, and again, same exact reasoning here. A lot of countries that are like federal states made up of lots of places that could probably be their own countries in a different world tend to try and make their political capital somewhere in the center. For example, the United States, their political capital, very close to the center, geographically speaking, of the country. That's just a fact. You can't, I mean, look at it. Washington, right there in the geographic center of the United States. Um, but you can see that this exact same thing applies to Australia. Their geogra- so um, obviously in Australia, it's a big continent. If you were going to do it right now, you might put the capital there. But they decided to put their capital between the two rival 
travelling cities that you might think are the capital, Sydney or Melbourne, and they put it in Canberra. Uh, again, if I was Melbourne, I'd feel like I got the short end of that stick. It's clearly closer to, to Sydney than it is to Melbourne, but the same thing applies. It's a big federal state. There's lots of places like Western Australia that actively wanted to be their own country, and so you've got to go to a compromise place. You can't favour one state over any other one, and so New South Wales and Victoria don't get the capital. Instead, they have the ACT, the Australian Capital Territory, and that's kind of fun, right? Speaking of things that are kind of fun, which is, by the way, ruled by all the states collectively by via the federal government, a lot of countries have that system, uh, like the US and, uh, I don't know, Puerto Rico, for example, or Canada, and like all of the places up there where no one lives. I mean, uh, you, you know, we'll come back to Canada, but I think the other interesting thing about Australia is the fact that although New Zealand looks really close to it, also, by the way, fun fact, New Zealand does, ex it's a common misconception, New Zealand doesn't exist, even Ikea uh, got a little bit confused about that one, um, but yeah, New Zealand does in fact exist, crazy fact, I know, but also, I think a lot of people, when they look at a map, they tend to zone out where the ocean is, because the ocean has no value to us as humans, however, there is so much ocean, or the Tasmanian Sea. There's so much water between Australia and New Zealand. In fact, if you measure the distance from Sydney, which is basically as far east as you can go, or as close to, uh, you know, close in Australia as you can get to New Zealand, and then you measure that to Auckland, which, fun fact, not the capital of New Zealand, you have 2,200 kilometers of distance, and to Wellington, the actual capital, it's 2,219, or about 1,400 miles. That's, that's a lot of miles. In fact, it's so many miles that a direct flight between the two countries, Sydney and Wellington, Wellington would take you uh, 428 pounds. Jesus, it's expensive. But it would also take three hours and 10 minutes. Wow, that is a very long flight between two next week. You know, this is like, this is your closest country if you're in Sydney and it's three hours away. For European perspective, I wanted to show you like, well, the equivalent in Europe would be I could go from London to Ukraine or London to Kiev in less distance than that. And I wanted to show this via Google Flights, but Google won't sell you flights from London to Kiev right now. It, and it says that flights are restricted due to closed airspace over Ukraine. Does anyone know what's going on in Ukraine and why their airspace is closed? I feel like I would have heard if there was a big reason. So let me know in the comments if there's something going on in Ukraine. I, uh, I hope I hope they're okay. Sounds like a great. Sounds like things should be going well. Anyway, so um yeah, that it's a fun fact. Australia very very far from New Zealand. I think uh, yeah, humans tend to zone out oceans on maps, which is why like yeah, the Pacific Ocean doesn't look very big, and like yeah, the Atlantic Ocean, it's like you know we're like right there, right? And so uh, yeah, like you, you might assume they're the same distance, but there's a huge gap in there. Um, but another thing that you might assume is like, yeah, well, Canada, uh, famous, you know, it's a huge country, but it's famous for being snowy, right? And saying that Canada is snowy is as misleading as to, you know, like, it would be a generalization in the same way that you could argue most of Canada has no people living in it, and you'd be entirely correct, by the way. Like, seriously, look at the country. It's like, yeah, there's like, there's like no one here. For most of it, that's why it's ruled by the, the federal government rather than it's being its own provinces. However, as you start to look at it and you realize that most of Canada has no people, it would be misleading to say that all of Canada had no people, even though that would be the same generalization. In the same way, not all of Canada is snowy. Yeah, if you go to uh, some of the middle parts, if you go to... But as you get towards the coast, it gets a lot less snowy. So Vancouver, for example, is not the most snowy. In fact, let me just show you. Uh, here are the Canadian cities with the least snow. Wow, the most snow, or rather the least most snow, the most least snow, whatever, the lowest amount of snow... <laughs> <laughs> That's how you say those words. Um, is actually Victoria and British Columbia. It has 13 inches of snow a year. In fact, it only snows for seven days, and it only has snow cover for five of those days. Would you say that it's snowy in... By the way, this is Victoria, the state capital of um, British Columbia. Would you say that a place is snowy because it has five days where there's snow on the ground every year? I would not say that. I would, in fact... I'm going to go crazy here. I'm going to say the opposite. I would say that that is not a snowy place. And you can see that it's not just the one place here. There's like, well, Vancouver has nine days. Abbotsford has 13. If we move, oh, wow. And then if you move out of British Columbia, it's like, yeah, there's like 53, uh, only 53 days in Windsor. Uh, in Toronto, there's 65 days of snow cover, uh, 36 days of snow in Ontario. Um, and these are the least often. Okay, there's a lot of Canadian cities of snow. In fact, what's the snowiest city? 131 inches of snow in St. John's. Jesus. Um, and then uh, there is 155 days with snow on the ground in Saguenay, Quebec, and 133 in Edmonton, Alberta. 
Wow, that's actually crazy. So yeah, just to remember, just reminder that Edmonton is not Canada as much as Victoria is in Canada. Every country, especially one that gets this big, has such huge differences, which is why they need capitals, which are in the center of the country. And thank God Canada chose a capital right in the center, super far away from the US border. Speaking of places that are far away from the US border, I think at least. Um, I wanted to talk about uh, Africa. So many people have, I mean, you know, right now, it's far from the US border. Just you wait until, uh, you know, j just you wait, Africa. But, um, yeah, Africa is a really interesting place because uh, it is a continent that is no. Okay, first of all, Africa is not a country. Misconception, uh, but I think you'd have to be, you know, within the US border and also have never looked at a map. So I, I think people make fun of Americans for that. It's not really that common to think Africa is a country, but a lot of people do generalize and say Africa is poor. That's not actually true. Here is a GDP PPP map of the world. In other words, it's how much money people have, just about equalized to understand like currency fluctuations. And red countries are poor. Yellow and orange countries are middle income, and green and blue countries are rich. Obviously, Western Europe and the US, you know, North America, like, you know, the, there's like 30 rich countries in the world, and yeah, they all shop here. Japan uh, is on there as well. But then after that, in the middle income countries, you've got places like, yeah, Brazil is the same color as Libya. Uh, you've got places like, um, you know, like Indonesia or uh, Thailand or Viet, sorry, uh, yeah, Vietnam uh, or Indonesia or India uh, or Mongolia have the same income as Egypt or as uh, Algeria. Area. In fact, Africa is not poor. A lot of Africa is, like Southwest Africa over here, big poor bubble. Uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, mostly poor, besides the bottom three countries. Um, but to say that Africa is a poor continent is kind of missing the point. There are a lot of countries in Central Africa which have their entire, you know, like, uh, it ha why, why, is, why is there, most of the poor countries on Earth are in Africa. Not all of them. You can see there's Venezuela, there's some Central American countries, there's some uh, East Asian countries where it gets, or Southeast Asian countries where it gets real bad. But um, what 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 went wrong in Africa? Um, if you if you want to be lazy with it, you just use the one word and you say uh, colonialism, and everyone goes, "Yep, I'm going to stop talking right now." And then you look like you've won the argument. But the, the the more detailed story is like, yeah, they have economies very geared towards resource extraction. Usually, not even a lot of resources. It's like one resource their entire country is based around. And although that can work with oil. Oil, if you diversify very quickly, as we've seen in some Gulf states, if you just have one resource, it's lithium or it's gold or something, they're valuable, but are they valuable enough to sustain 80 million people on? Usually not. And also you're very you get you get caught in fluctuations off it, which is why it's a bad thing. Speaking of things being bad. I should mention uh, that Australia is not the baddest continent, although, you know, actually, there's a, there's a fun talk there. Uh, it's in fact, in fact, it's also not the biggest island because Australia is not an island. A lot of people think Australia is the biggest island and looking at the world, it seems very clear as to why that's true, but continents don't count as islands. If the biggest island could include continents, Afro-Eurasia, this whole landmass right here would count, but it doesn't and Australia is considered a continent. Fun fact, it's the seventh continent that we use in the English speaking world. Um, but yeah, you can see that Australia is a continent, also known as Oceania in the in, in, in most of the world, I want to say. Uh, but Oceania is, in fact, a whole continent. And so why is it a continent? I think a lot of people think of it as an island because it's one country. However, if you imagine Australia's states, because, you know, there's a lot of them, if you imagine these as independent countries, Western Australia almost once uh, once was, uh, you know, Tasmania uh, kind of almost once was. If you look at these places and imagine like six separate countries, then you would start to realize that, yeah, they would all be huge countries and this would feel more like a continent. Uh, this was something that my friend uh, Kobe uh, from Kobe and History, he, he, like, he really like explained to me like, yeah, we only see it as one country because it is, you know, as one continent or one island because it is one country. Usually islands are ruled by one country, whereas continents are split. There is no no continent that is owned by a single country, even the very biggest countries, the United States or Canada, don't come anywhere close to owning their entire continents, but Australia just happens to be a very large country. One of the very largest, in fact. Anyway, so um, misconception, uh, the next one here has to be that the actual largest island is Greenland, but Greenland is not as big as you think. Greenland is only looking so big because of the Mercator projection. If you look at the Earth as a globe, and as according to most people, the Earth is a globe, not according to some very astute people I've been hearing 
hearing about on the internet, making some real great arguments about why it might not be. But uh, if you believe, you know, suspend your disbelief and say the Earth might be a globe, you'll see that actually, yeah, Greenland is much smaller. When you try to take a globe and put it on a flat surface, the Mercator uh, projection, the way you kind of distort that, means that you have to make some countries bigger or smaller. And so Greenland gets bigger and Africa gets smaller. If you look at Africa on a uh, circular map, you're like, ooh, yeah, wow, it is a huge continent. And uh, some people make the argument that this is like some racist, blah, 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 blah. But it's actually because of seafaring. This map is really good for directions. You can know roughly where somewhere is and get there quite quickly. You just won't know how big it is when you're going to land. And even then, it's not by a lot, right? It's not that Africa isn't that much bigger on a globe view. And Greenland isn't that much smaller. It's still one of the biggest places. On Earth. Like, seriously, this is Greenland. This is the island I'm from. It's still a lot bigger. And that's why it's the biggest island on the planet. Anyway, you know, I, I want to just point out, by the way, while I was diving into this consonant thing, I, uh, I was reading this page and I was like, yep, seven consonants, that's fine. Uh, as you can see, Australia is eight million square kilometers. It doesn't have much population living there, but it's still uh, a big, big place. However, then I was like, yep, it says about Russia being split between two. It is interesting. We have like a European Russia and an Asian Russia. Uh, in the European Russia, 75% of the Russian population live. But in the Asian uh, continent, uh, the Asian Russia, 75% of the territory exists there. Is Russia Asian or European, you don't really get to decide. But then I read this, which continent does Hawaii belong to? None. Hawaii is politically part of North America, but geographically not part of any continent. And then I realized, yeah, this map uses a view of the world where there are countries outside of continents. And then I looked into it further and I was like, wow, this is one of those things where you dive in a bit more. And you're like, yeah, this map that I found shows that, uh, you know, for example, Hawaii is part of North America, Iceland's part of Europe, etc., etc. But then it's like, yeah, Papua New Guinea is where Australia ends and Indonesia begins. How can you say that this border, this straight line on the island of uh, Papua, like, yeah, Papua is, is is Asian when it's part of Indonesia, and it's uh, it's obviously, it's uh, Australian when it's a part of Papua New Guinea. What sense does that make? It doesn't make any sense. The consonant model makes basically no sense once you start including islands. Calling New Zealand part of Oceania is ridiculous too. Look how far away it is. It's almost as far, not quite as far. Hawaii is very far from America, by the way. 3,700 kilometers. Um, but like, uh, in fact, let me show you how far it is by rerouting my travel plans from uh, Kiev to Hawaii. I just want to go anywhere in Hawaii. How long is it going to take me? Uh, 35 hours and 31 minutes. Man, that, that seems a bit long, right? Anyway, so uh, yeah, if you want to go to Hawaii, wouldn't recommend it unless you've got 35 hours to spare or you live in California. And um, yeah, so it's very far away. It's not a part of any continent if you're being logical, but politically it's attached to the US. Australia and Papua New Guinea used to be a part of the same empire fun fact. And so they feel together, whereas Indonesia feels Asian. And that's, uh, we use feelings to dictate consonants. And so any fact you learn about consonants ever is probably going to be either false or not verifiably true. It is a true fact, for example, that the capital of uh, France is Paris. It's very hard to deny that. Um, and so, uh, you know, <laughs> I almost said Switzerland, but Switzerland has the one capital that isn't uh, verifiably true. Fun fact, the reason that the biggest city being known as the capital is true for a lot of people is because most countries on Earth have the biggest city being the capital. Switzerland is one of the very few exceptions to this, but Switzerland doesn't even have an official capital. And so, is Bern the capital of Switzerland? The, well, that's where their government meets, but they don't call it the capital, and they officially say we have no capital. So, yeah, it's one of those cases where, even though the capital of France is undeniably Paris, the capital of Switzerland is a bit more deniably Bern. You could say it's anywhere. You could say they have no capital. You could say they have a ton of capitals, because they've got lots of regional parliaments. You can say, uh, you know, you could say uh, that America has 50 capitals. Some people genuinely say that when I say the capital's DC. They're like, no, America has 50 capitals, you idiot. I love the capital of Springfield. Field, Illinois. And um, yeah, the truth is, lots of facts about the world are kind of deniable and more in the green er gray area. <laughs> I mean, also in the green area. Uh, but that, and that's the interesting thing about talking about the planet. There are lots of gray areas and lots of interesting places to dive into. I love to do so on my channel. Uh, however, some facts are black and white and uh, Canberra being the capital of Australia or, uh, you know, the highest point on the planet being probably, um, you know, Chimborazo, if you count the sun as your distance. Those facts are undeniably true for now. We'll see if there's any big changes to that. Anyway, uh, yeah, these are some of the biggest misconceptions. I'm going to count them after the video, and then that will be the title. And I hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, if you Actually, wait. Um, 
Usually this is where YouTubers do their big subscriber pitch, like, oh, if you subscribe to the channel, uh, then blah, 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 blah. But actually, I'd like to mention, uh, if you've been enjoying this video, uh, please unsubscribe. You have to really like this video to stay subscribed. It's better on YouTube to have fewer active subscribers than lots of inactive people. And so just, just unsubscribe. Honestly, if you've been feeling like this channel isn't for you for a bit, just, just unsubscribe. This is my unsubscribe pitch. Please do that. Thank you for doing so. Hope you have a good day, and I won't see you next time. Goodbye.